There he is. Right away. Right away. That's a decent sized one right there. Oh, it just dropped off. Ah! Come here, you. That's what we want. Right there. What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to another high adventure video. We are starting the day by trying to load the boat with a bunch of these little brim right here because we are going to be setting some bush hooks for the first time on my channel. Needless to say, I am pumped, super excited, never done anything like this before, but ever since I moved here to the South, this has been on my bucket list of things to try. So today, we're finally gonna be giving it a go. Put our cooler up. I already got a one small one in there. That one's a little bit bigger. It's gonna be dropping them in. And we're gonna try to load this up today with just a bunch of nice size brim for our bush hooks or AKA set hooks. Right over there by that pump. There he is, right there immediately. Ha, another one. Hey, I think that's a good size for a bush hook right there. Another solid size, that'll go on a hook under a big old stumpy. Oh, there she goes, perfect. Looks like a good bush hook size to me. Got the live well going now. That's the biggest one of the day right there. Check this out, y'all. We got a perch, probably about five inches. That ought to be great on a bush hook, I would think. There's one. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, dude, that's a big old shell cracker. Look at that. Dudes, we got to throw a shell cracker on. That's like an eating size one. But we'll try throwing that down there. Maybe it'll be a big old flathead that'll eat that. Probably the new biggest one of the day. Sweet. Cooler's just about full. All right, it's been a good morning. Take a look at this. We have got a live well full of shell cracker, like that big guy right there. We've also got some yellow perch. We've got uh, traditional bluegill and a lot of pumpkin seed in there as well. So that should be good bush hook bait, I'm thinking. We are gonna go ahead and get on back and get all of our hooks set up and try to keep these guys alive for the afternoon, get them in some shade and then hopefully uh, be ready to go for tonight out on the river. So I'll catch you guys back at the house. Where are they? Here we go. Y'all, I have got some fresh frozen water bottles jumping in our boat and we're putting these in our little bait tank try to keep the water nice and chilled i've already gone through a couple here but all the brim are still alive so it must be working also bought this over here this is shad keeper the shad holding formula it uh, should actually get rid of a lot of the bubbles here that are starting to form and it keeps uh electrolytes in the water apparently ethan at lake world bait shop recommended this to me so we're gonna just dump a little of that in there maybe maybe just a little bit more there we go and that should help keep these fish alive here that plus with the aerator and the little ice uh ice water bottles to keep the water chill that should keep everybody alive for just a couple more hours before they head into the river now over here let me show you what we've got going on we have here some big old bait hooks. Ethan actually sold those to me, as well as this twine. This is like 230 pound Tess twine. We're gonna be using ounce and a half egg sinkers, as well as 230 pound Tess steel swivels. I think these are steel. Power swivel. Anyway, heavy duty swivels. Let me show you how we're gonna rig all this up. What I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of leader, maybe about a foot and a half here. We're gonna tie our hook on one end, you wanna check your regulations in the areas that you live in because there are definitely certain like regs here in South Carolina, uh, specifically for like the bodies of water that you're setting bush hooks on. Uh, the body of water I'm setting mine on isn't, uh, doesn't have a lot of regulations on it, fortunately. Um, but there are some areas here in South Carolina where like you have to have like certain hook sizes and stuff. I believe for all of South Carolina, you can only set your bush hooks um, an hour before sunset, and then you have to remove them an hour after sunrise, no later than an hour after sunrise. So that should be perfect. Got one hook on. Now, on the other end, we'll take our Spro swivel. Here we go. We've got hook here, swivel here. So we've got our leader. That's about a foot long. Might do the other ones just a little bit longer than that. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take some more of our black line here, about 10 feet of it is what I'm looking for. I know the river pretty well where we're going to be setting this and uh, it doesn't get much deeper than probably about five, six feet. There are some holes that get about eight, nine feet deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have black line now 
It's 10 feet long. Now, I know a lot of people usually like this set line. They'll use a white line for that just so they could see it a little bit better. Um, I don't have any white line with me, but what I'm gonna be doing is actually on my Navionics app uh, on my phone, I'm gonna be marking where I set these bush hooks. So we'll be able to find them. Plus, we're only gonna do about a dozen and the stretch of river isn't exactly huge. So we shouldn't have any problem finding them. Plus I've got the eyes of a hawk. So, you know, it always helps. Another reason for the swivel I learned as well is that when those catfish, obviously when they get hooked and they try to take off, realize they can't take off, they'll start to turn. And anybody who's caught fat catfish know they do like, oh, they do like that death roll, almost kind of like a trout. Trout kind of do the same thing, uh, but they'll just start rolling and rolling. Uh, well, that swivel will, will roll with it. See, it'll that line will turn as well. Um, I read, uh, somebody said what'll happen is if you don't use a swivel, that line, you know, it's all threaded together. If they roll the opposite direction, it'll unthread like that and then break. So now we take ounce and a half sinker and I hope that fits through. Yep, perfect. We're just gonna slide that down our lead line all the way down to the swivel. There's definitely some current in this river, but it's not terrible. And the brim we're using aren't huge. And there you go. We have our hook, swivel, egg sinker, and then about approximately 10 feet of line that we can attach to a tree limb or a bush. And that will have our, our uh, little bait on it, our live brim. But there we go, guys. We got our first bush hook line made. Now we just have 11 more to go. You're allowed up to 50, but I'm not setting 50. A 12 will be just fine for our first trip out. There you go, y'all. We got a dozen bush hooks set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and get the kayak loaded up and head to the river. You know, I think the most impressive thing about this whole entire challenge is the fact that I've been able to keep 15 brim alive all day on a 95 degree day here in the south. Whew. There she goes. Traveling light today. Not a bunch of fishing gear, tackle, etc. Just some waters, some hooks and such. Kind of nice. So I've split the bait. I've got like six or seven in there. Got, I guess, like eight in there. Trying to give everybody enough space. We've kept them alive this long. Woohoo! Trying to keep them alive a little longer here. Looks like we're floating. Looks like we're good. All right, water's a little stained. That's the first thing I notice. But it's not chocolate milk, so that's good. I mean, I don't know if it'd matter much either way. We are just gonna start trekking up river. We're looking for a good spot. When we find something that looks good, then we're gonna pull up to it and drop some fish down. Here we go. We've got a nice limb right here. Start off the evening. Let's give this a try. Let's unravel our first line here. Let's see, is this pretty good? Oh, that's... Always test your limb. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't snap like a twig like that part right there. Looks pretty good. Looks darn good, actually. All right, let's grab a, grab a brim. You know, actually, first one's going to be a perch. Just the first one I grabbed. There we go. Look at that. Big old perch. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. First bush hook. Yep, that's on the bottom too. I can see it. One line down. On to the next one. Good luck, little fella. Get me something big. I feel like we need to put something right in here somewhere. This looks really good. Got a lot of eddying going on. What do you guys think? Put it on this, I don't know. Does it have to have give? Or can we just tie it around this like this and be okay? Let's find out, how about that? But we all find out together. There you go. Another nice one right there. Let's see if that goes all the way down. Looks like it. This is like a good branch right here. Dead ahead. There we go. That looks really good. Dad gum, that looks good. There she goes. Golly, look at this. Doesn't this look good? This looks real good. One muddy bank. Big old dead tree. Let's see how dead this limb is. Would it hold up? 
Would a catfish tear it apart? I think it would shake. There's a water snake. Oh, ugh. big spider. Yeah, probably should check before I put my hands on stuff. But I think that will do. I think these spiders are going to come and attack me. I feel like they're not happy with me right now. Here you go. Big old shell crackers going down right here. There she goes. Oh, careful. Sweet. Oh, ho, ho. that'd be sweet if we got something on that. On to the next spot. I feel like this deserves one right around here somewhere. Be a little tricky though. Oh, look at See the gar right there? Hoping that live bait keep the gar out of our... Look at them right there. Look at spear those things. There they go. But I'm hoping this live bait will keep them out of all of our goings on here. To nestle up in here a little bit, unfortunately. I hate doing that because of the spiders, but... Biscuit for the biscuit, I reckon. There you go. Woo, he's lively. Make sure that gets to the bottom. Oh, look at us swimming around. See him right there? Daggum, son. There's a catfish in the air. He's gonna hammer that. This is a little shallower than I thought, but like those big flatheads and blues, they'll come up shallow. They'll definitely come up shallow. That's crazy. All right, we have our line set just in time too, because the sun literally just set like two minutes ago and I've got to run about a mile down river, fortunately down river, to get back to the truck and haul out of here. Nothing left to do but get a good night's sleep and get ready for more paddling in the morning. Mm. I tell you what, the discovery of Uncrustables since I moved down here has been life changing. Moment of truth. I'm nervous and I'm excited because I'm gonna be super disappointed if I didn't get anything. 12 lines. I mean, we gotta have something, right? This this river is packed, packed with catfish. There we go, coming up on our first line. Oh boy. Let's see, let's see. Nothing. Shoot, that was that perch. Nothing on that. Looks pretty well undisturbed too. Okay, well, I know I can't get something on everything. First go, no fish. All right, here's line number two. Anybody on this one? Oh, wait a second, that feels... Wait. Oh man, just a branch. Dang, it felt heavy. Just hooked on a limb, but there's no bait. Shoot. 0 oh, for 2. Not a great start. Not a great start. Third time's a charm, right? Now that line is out that way a little bit. I feel like that's a little off from where I set it originally. Oh, dude, I feel something. I feel something. What do we got? We got, we got a... We got a flathead. Yes. Yes. We've got a flathead. Let's get him up in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Let's go. Look at that. That's probably about four pounds. Probably about a four pound flathead. That is awesome. That is so cool. I'm so psyched I got one. There we go. All right, we got him on a stringer. We're gonna just set him back here for now though on the deck. Just want that stringer for extra security. Just in case he goes haywire and jumps over the side. There we go, we're secure. Let's get this line in. <laughs> First successful bush hook. So stinking cool. This line looks like it's kind of fighting the current here. Let's see. Oh, dude, that's upriver, man. Well, I don't know if I've got any... Dude, I did have something on this at one point. This line's all the way up here in the in the tree. Can't tell if I still do or not. I'm snagged on something down here, it feels like. No, we got something. Wow! <laughs> what do we got? Another flathead! What? No way! This is so cool! 
This is so cool right now. Not very big, but it's another nice fish. Look at that big old bucket mouth on that thing. It's like, got him. Ha! Yes! Another one! Let's sit her right over here. Oh, all tangled and mangled up here. Let's cut ourselves out of the tree here. Oh, nasty spiders. That is, try not to look too closely. Just gonna cut this out of the tree. There we go. Get us out of here. There we go. Look at that right there. Another one. Look at the mouths on these flathead. Like they got big old jaws, dude. I mean, check that out. They got a big old gaping mouth. That's probably, like I said, about three pounds would be my guess. Nothing huge, but that's two flathead. You know, the um, kind of the prevailing wisdom on flathead is that live bait is the best bait for flathead. Now, obviously you can catch them on cut bait. You can catch them on all kinds of stuff, but uh, live bait is definitely the preferred method amongst catfishermen. But this is sweet. Two catfish in four lines, still got eight to go. I mean, who knows what's on the other lines. Let's get this guy on a stringer. Let's keep heading up river. All right, I'm curious to see about this line. This is that big uh, shell cracker we put down. This is gonna have to be a bigger catfish than either of the last two we just caught to eat this thing. We'll see. See if anybody's on here or not. Don't feel anything, unfortunately. Nothing got him. Wow, he's still alive too. Like he's still kicking. Dude, that's crazy. Huh, well, shucks. There you go, you little lucky thing. I don't know if you'll live, but I don't know, you might. Look, there's a gar, more gar hanging out here. Don't want that. This looks pretty taut, y'all. Looks kind of taut and off to the side. Oh, nasty spider. Of course, I just totally missed it. Come on. Got anything on this? Oh, I got a gar. Oh my gosh, look at that big old gar. <laughs> That's not what I want. Man, he nailed that. Nailed that uh, bluegill. That was that lively one we put out last night. Sheef. I don't even want to bring that in the boat. Like, we're just gonna cut that line. Dang it. You're not supposed to eat that. All right, we're halfway through our bush hooks. Two catfish and one gar so far. Not terrible for our first time, I'd say. Heading on up, Sot six to go. All right. Anybody home? Feels pretty light. Pretty light. Oh, dude, the hook broke off, man. Dang. That's the first one where like the hook is just gone. Wonder if I didn't tie it quite tight enough. That's probably it. Kind of doubt a catfish would have eaten through that. Shoot. Opportunity missed. That's for sure. Let's see, this line looks like it's kind of up river here. Nope, 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 nope. Look at that. Look, that line's moving. That line's moving. There's something on here. For sure. Oh, I, oh wait, no. Was it hooked on the boat? I was just hooked on the boat. Dang it. Oh, no, it was, no, it was a gar. Dang it, another gar. Shucks. You know, that might have been what bit through that line back there. What are you guys doing? Stay off my lines. Another big one. Not what I want. Get out of here. Shucks. All right, last line. Started the day off hot. Then went kind of cool with the two gar. Had nothing on the last three. Now this line is tight and is going up river. So that's a good sign. At least sign. It's wrapped around something. It definitely wasn't the way it was. You can see this line. It's, it's up river. There. Dang. Oh, check that out. Check that out for the last line. That hook is bent out. Look at that. Dude, we had something on there. Not only did we have something on there, but we had something solid on there. That line was that way when I put it down. It was up under this, up under this big old log. Hate to end it that way, 
really do really hate ending it that way. Well, we started the day off hot. Two catfish in the first four lines. And then kind of went cold, unfortunately. You now it's kind of like uh, catching a fish, like within the first five minutes of fishing. You know, it's almost bad luck, it seems like. But you know what? That is not too bad for a first time setting bush hooks. Somebody tell me the ratio. We caught two catfish, two gar in 12 hooks. Is that pretty good? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm happy with it. We also lost a big one. We're going to have to upgrade our hooks. That's for sure. So we've got a good tail to tell. Always good to have a tail to tell at the end of your fishing trip. We're heading back down river. Fortunately, heading down river makes it for easy paddling. And we're going to get back and cook up some flathead. I've only ever had flathead one other time, so I'm pretty stoked. <sighs> Holy monkeys, ladies and gentlemen. It is hot out here. I think I saw it was like 96 in the truck. We have dispatched both catfish, so we are ready to clean. Crazy, in one trip, I caught as many flathead as I caught in my whole life. Oh, man. Look at that right there. Good grief. The first thing I noticed on this is like the meat is super thick. It's a, uh, it's a big old piece of catfish there. Not just long ways, but like just the, the sheer girth is impressive. My little lady Bella has decided to join us. Bella, are you getting ready to go somewhere? Uh-huh. I'm going to Costco. Oh, are you going to Costco with mama? Uh-huh. Ooh, one of our favorite stores. I like it because they have little treats. <laughs> they do have little treats, don't they? All around the store. Like, I just hang out in Costco and eat all the treats. Well, bye-bye. I love you, baby. Give me a kiss. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. I'll cook some up for you, okay? Be ready when you get back. I want to see his whole body. Oh, uh, well, here's half a body. You want to see half the body? Yes, we're gonna cook them. You wanna help me? Uh huh. All right. You like catfish? Uh -huh. Oh, Bye. See ya. Love you, honey. Bye. Mwah. Okay. All right, I'll have supper ready when you get back. Drive safe. I will. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Mr. C, you got the seasoning for me there, son? We've got some cubed up, but before we just throw it in the fryer with our Cajun crispy fish fry, Louisiana seasoning. We're gonna cook one up regularly. What do you think, Mr. Crockett? Very good. Uh -huh. Sounds good. That sounds like the standard response. Here we go. Let's do some uh, slap. Or that's not slap your mama. That's Cajun's two step. This should be perfect because it's not too spicy for Mr. C, who has a little bit of a spice aversion, right? Huh? The first thing we're gonna do is we got this nice little bit of flathead, and we're gonna take some of our seasoning, and I want to eat this just regular. Just taste the flathead by itself, not fried up. Obviously, we're throwing some seasoning on it, but I just kind of want to see what the texture's like. There we go. This should be ready. Oh, little flathead filet. I'm excited, Papa. dude. Hey, Papa. Yes. I'm staying back. You're staying back? That's a good idea, yeah. It's, it's bubbling a little bit, but yeah, best to just stay back and stay safe because that stuff can really start shooting up at you. While we let our catfish pan sear up, Mr. C is going to help me bread Ooh, this catfish. All right, about yay much. Let's start with that. What do you say? Three, four, do we need a lid on? Five, yes, we will. Good job. This is supposed to be a little spicy. I don't know. So we'll start with this. Papa also has a different seasoning as well. So if this is too spicy for you guys, we can do something a little bit. I'll put the lid on just like that. All right, you're the shaking man. Shake it. There you go, yes sir. Keep shaking. Did I tell you you could stop? There you go, yeah, keep it. This is what I had kids for. All right, so we have a small issue come up. We are now cooking on the mini grill because the big grilled propane uh, just went out and it's Friday afternoon and there is no way I am leaving this house to try to brave the traffic to get to Home Depot for more propane. So we got the little cooker out here and this should do just nicely. Oh yeah, that's looking real good. In fact, I think that's about done right there. Go ahead and pull him off. Yeah, let's see, look, it's flaking up. Got him over there. Whew. I kind of like letting these rest in all the seasoning because I feel like they get like a nice, good, heavy coat on them. I didn't even test that oil. Kind of went in on faith there. 
Good thing it was ready. Have a soggy nugget. Don't want your nuggets to be soggy. Ooh, that flathead's looking amazing. Crockett, what you up to over here, bro? Oh, nice. Oh, man. This is where worms live. This is where worms live, isn't it? Oh, this one's cool. Oh, dude, your dump truck's too big for me. I don't think my arm will reach. Ugh. Oh, that's okay. Oh, hey, I want the Tonka. Look at out of my way. There we go. I got, hey, look, I got a bucket. Look, I'll dump it into this little guy right here. Beep, beep, beep. Hmm. Nobody let me get near a heavy piece of equipment anytime soon. All right, Doodly, hop on up. Look at this. We have some fresh flathead nuggets as well as some delicious flathead or just a delicious flathead filet. Let's say a quick prayer to you before we start. Can you fold your hands for me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for this life that we live and this food you've provided us with. And may you bless it to our bodies now. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Mr. Crockett recently has really enjoyed helping Mama in the kitchen and Papa with his cooking. And your face is dirty. Good heavens. You've had a full summer day outside, haven't you? <laughs> All right. Let's show everybody a look at that. Mm-mm-mm. Little flathead, you want to bite? Mmm. It didn't even hit your lips, and you're already mmming it up. Mmm. No, yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? This boy loves fish right here, if you couldn't tell. Oh, man. That flathead's good. Just like that. That is surprising to me. Because catfish, to me, is best fried. But dang, Mr. C, that's fresh tasted. That's delicious. Well, we polished that off. Time for this fried stuff. Pick a piece, any piece. Mm. What do you want? Hmm. Huh. Maybe this one. Maybe that one. I'm gonna go with this one. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers me. Thank you. Here we are. Not real spicy, is it? Huh? You'd know because this little guy does not care for spice at all. <sighs> Look at that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Which one did you like better, the fried or the fillet? Uh, fry. This one right here. The fried. Me too. Fried still, just for the win for catfish 100 percent but i have to say that flathead nice and flaky delicious i'm a fan should we get some more uh -huh. i agree i agree well mr crockett we have to cook up the rest of this for mama and sissy mama's gonna bring back some fresh coleslaw so we're gonna have us a catfish feast tonight thank y'all so much for hanging out with me on my first ever setting of bush hooks i would say it was pretty successful but you know, we had that one bend our hook out. I feel like we got to get out there and try it again. Got to chase after a big piggy catfish. What do you think, Mr. C? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Man of many words here. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, we will see you in the next one.